Hello everyone, and welcome back to Garden with, Garden, Garden Fever. Um, this is Corey Lefever, and I wanted to talk to you all about uh, flower bulbs. It's September now in uh, northern Utah, and I'm not sure where you're from, but uh, this is this time of the year that you want to put in uh, your bulbs if you're uh, planning on planting flowers. Um, so I wanted to do a video of maybe uh, 10 uh, bulbs that are good for this time of the year because I know when I first got into gardening uh, it was a little confusing there's so many hundreds and hundreds of different varieties of flowers and I just got confused on the mass amounts of information of, of what and where to plant uh, certain flowers so so I wanted to do a video to kind of break that down a little bit for people so they have kind of like a guide of what to plant in the fall um, so I came up with kind of a list of uh, 10 bulbs. Now not 10 flowers in particular, but 10 families of flowers that are good and generally good in, in the fall time. So uh, uh, it would maybe make it easier that, so that you can just kind of go and scan through all the, all the flowers at the store, the bulbs, and kind of have an idea of which ones are generally good for fall time planting. So um, I'll, I'll name off my list and then we'll get into kind of how to plant them and how to uh, um, maybe some tips with that you know uh, so we'll start with the iris irises are beautiful flowers um, tulips uh, daffodils alliums uh, hyacinthas or hyacinthas ugh, I probably butchered that but it's H Y A C I N T H uh, crocuses, uh, muscari, lilies, cyclamen, and I probably butchered that one too. A lot of these names are very fancy, but uh, I'll put I'll put a list a list in the description of, of these flowers and kind of show some pictures when we get to the editing part. Um, and then the poppy. Um, within each of those groups, there are hundreds of different colors and varieties and types, and they're not all exactly the same on their, uh, their zones that they're in, but uh, they're all generally good to plant in the fall time. And that generally runs between September and November for most places, at least in the United States. Um, with uh, earlier being in the colder regions and later in the, in the warmer areas. So anyway, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about the tulip because the tulip is one of the most popular. Everybody knows who the tulip, what the tulip looks like. It's next to the rose as far as popularity. Um, Holland dominates the pop, uh, the, the tulip scene, but uh, it originated in uh, China. Um, and it's a it's a very beautiful flower. Um, it comes up first thing in the spring. Most varieties come up right away in the spring. Some are mid spring, and there are even some varieties that are late spring. Um, but they're also edible too. Which, you know me, I, I love edible plants. The idea of being able to eat your yard appeals to me. Um, just seems logical. But I know a lot of you out there, are there for the beauty and the aesthetics of your yard. And they, you want to beautify it. So um, you, you don't always have to do that. But the tulip is edible. The, the leaves, or not the leaves, the, uh, uh, the flower petals are very edible. And the bulb is too, but it's very tricky on how you have to prepare it. You have to prepare it in a specific way. You got to hollow out the core, and it's very, uh, in my opinion, in this day and age, it's not really worth it. But in World War II, Holland actually was able to stem off starvation due to all their their uh, tulips. So I mean, it, it came in handy, you know, eating the petals, and they're not too bad. I've actually eaten them with with the petals and the rose petals too. Roses are edible, and I've eaten those too. Um, but anyway, uh, they're very good to, to grow. Um, very easy. Uh, bull plants are very, very easy to grow. Um, and uh, I'll cut away, and I actually have some bulbs that I'm going to plant, so I'll, I'll uh, when we get to that part of the video, I'll show you kind of how to lay them out and, um, and whatnot, give you more advice on that for the beginner gardener. For you that are more advanced, uh, you probably know a lot of this information, but uh, Anyway, um, one thing I can say about bulbs is they uh, they, they look better in groups. Um, I've tried it where you do like little bits here and there, and they just don't look as good. Um, 
they're the kind of flower that you want to really group up and really pack in. Um, how big the flower is and how vibrant they are depends on how close you put them together. But you can put them really close and they can still look really good. Um, you can almost put them next to each other. There are some, some of the bigger bulbs you want to leave a little bit of room in between each one, but you don't uh, give a little bit of space. But uh, some of the smaller ones like crocuses, um, uh, you can really pack them in. Um, and they look, they look really good. Um, and one tip that I'll give you is stagger them. Stagger their growth. Find out, find out when they come out and put all of them in the same spot. So for example, like you could put tulips down below, kind of lower, and then you can put like a, a crocus up top above it. Um, so like you would put, stagger out the tulips in maybe a circle or a square arrangement and then put a little bit of soil over them and then put crocuses on top of them. And there's a whole array of ways you can do that. Um, what happens is, is one will come up first thing in the spring and then die down and then right after they die down another one will come up and take its place so by doing that you can get the, you can just have an array of color in one spot of different types of flowers that spread all the way into the summer um, and you don't really have a, a dead spot or a blank spot in your garden um, or in your flower beds so when we get to that part of it, I'll show you because I've got some ideas that I'm going to do. I got some uh, some uh, tulips and some crocuses and some irises that I'm going to plant today, and I'll, I'll show you my process towards that. So they do like loose, loamy soil, obviously. I mean, almost all the garden videos out there, you'll you'll hear them say that uh, you don't want really tight, compacted soil. Here in Utah, we live in a lake bed a prehistoric lake bed so we have very we have a problem with clay soil so if you do you want to mix hay and like maybe coconut coir and uh, sand and just constantly mix that in when it, you know and loosen it up they'll grow easier and better that way one of the negatives to uh, bulbs is when you plant them in the ground after they've got gotten done growing they'll go back down to the ground go into a hibernation mode from summer to fall and it's real, real easy. I've done this, and I know all the gardeners out here are going to agree with me on this. They, you, you forget that they're there. You get busy doing other things. You're pulling weeds. You're mulching. You're doing all this stuff, and you forget they're there. Uh, what happens is, is I've, I've dug up my bulbs unknowingly. You know, whether I was weeding or I was, I seen a blank spot and thought, oh, I'm going to put a summer flower right here. And then as I got digging, I realized that's where. Remember, that's where I put all my tulip bulbs. And I'm like, oh no, I just dug them all up. So it's very important to remember where you put them. Um, also, another negative is is you, it's harder to mulch weeds. If you lay down a weed cloth or you put a thick mulch, you can suffocate them out. Um, I've, I've done that too, where I've had a nice constant growth of uh, bulbs and then I mulched everything and didn't didn't really think about you know it was later in the summer they had already gone down to hibernate and I didn't really think about next spring when they have to come up again they got to push through not only the dirt now but the layer of mulch or weed cloth that I did and I and I killed them. so those are the the negatives is you, you once you put them in the ground you got to remember they're there and you got to leave them alone um, you can weed but you got to weed carefully um, so bulbs are one of those where you kind of do have to thin the weeds by hand. Um, uh, you can use sprays. I don't recommend that. I'm not real fond. I'm not real fond of the sprays. I prefer just to go all natural. Um, but teach is on. So if you're going to not use sprays, uh, you've got to hand weed them, and that's one of the negatives to bulbs. But one of the positives to bulbs is they're they're perennial. Once you put them in there, they'll come back year after year after year after year, and they're beautiful flowers. All of those that I listed, I mean, there is so many beautiful colors, and they're just wonderful. So I, I highly recommend that um, you throw some bulbs, you know, into your yard. Now, if you don't want to have to do the weeding and you want to mulch around your other stuff, your other flower beds or, or uh, weed cloth or whatever, an alternative is in pots. And I've grown them in pots, they grow great. 
so they, you know, if you want to avoid all that and you don't want them actually in your yard, um, put them in pots and then you can, you know, like halfway through the pot, put the bigger bulbs and then stagger them up, like I said, that way they constantly bloom and, and you have months of beautiful flowers in your pots. That's a way to get around it. And they're all, they're all pretty cold hardy, so even over the winter, I've lost very few bulbs in the pots, even though they're more exposed. So, all right, I'll go ahead and cut the video for now, and I'll be back in a little bit once we get to the part where we're putting them in the ground. Okay, everyone, there's my tulip bulbs. I put them in first because they're a bigger bulb. It's generally bigger, medium, and then smaller ones on the top, generally. So uh, I just space them out about that much, put them in a nice circle so they'll sprout right there. Um, I'm going to cover them up with some light soil and then throw my uh, crocuses on top of them. So uh, a good rule of thumb is I usually measure about three times the size of the bulb and that's how deep I go. So um, anyway, I'll be back with the crocuses. Let me get these in. Okay, we're back. I just put a thin layer over the tulips and then I put in my crocuses right there. Now, I also forgot to mention you want to put them with the pointy side pointed up like that. And then just cover them up and uh, don't necessarily pack them down. If you mulch, do a light mulching above them. Don't do a thick mulching or else you'll snuff them out. But anyway, that's all you got to do to get get them going and then next spring I'll give you an update and show you how beautiful they are. This is Corey Lefevre signing out. Like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Till next time.